your windows. It's true. Hear that thunder? Is this thing on? Looks like it's on. Hello everyone. It's me, JJ, the producer of video games and more, and the owner of Bright Idea Records. And once again, I'm just doing a quick little video, not streaming. It's going to upload this because, you know, streaming is kind of complicated if you're going to do it right. And, uh, you know, I just don't feel like I can do much right right now, except... I managed to get my gecko a good doctor, I think. Finally. Gonna go uh, tomorrow afternoon. And, you know, I'd tell you more. But I don't want to jinx myself. But I got a really good feeling that they don't see dogs or cats. No canines or felines. Just reptiles and rabbits. I know, right? Why rabbits? Because they're different. And people need rabbit doctors. They don't need cat and dog doctors. And sometimes people need bird doctors. And cat and dog doctors aren't good for them, neither. If you can believe that. Um... Yeah, check this out. You'll like this. Uh, you better like this. Because he's my little angel. And why is he little? Well, technically, he's like Godzilla. Okay? He's, he's basically the most monstrous leopard gecko I've ever seen. He's 18 years of badass my best friend my bro my baby boy osama bin gecko if you fuck with him he'll knock down your twin towers and probably knock a tooth out too motherfucker okay that's how hardcore he is you can't knock him down you can't bring he's like uh he's like this pixel phone right even though it's broken and overheats since the day I owned it, it still doesn't break no matter how many times I drop it. Takes a licking, keeps on ticking. Something like that. I'm not trying to sell you a godforsaken Timex watch. I'm just trying to say, look at his poor eyes. Do you see that? You know, geckos are supposed to look like that. You know? They're not supposed to look like that. And it's because of the fat pads in his eye sockets have been dried out for a long time. That's why his tail's all skinny like that. And I really think tomorrow my, my prayers or whatever, my hopes will be answered. I really think I lucked out. <laughs> when my dental hygienist at Associated Dental told me about an exotic specialist that she took her tortoise to. Why couldn't I find them? I don't know. I'm stupid. I can't do things. I've showed you how lousy my Twitch skills are. I've demonstrated. What do you think I'm faking? I really grew up in a different time. And though I'm an expert at a lot of things, you know, some things I still struggle with because they change the rule book all the time. What am I supposed to do? Go back to school? Not really easy. First of all, college costs money. Second of all, I really don't want to commit to a semester of school that's not going to earn me anything other than knowledge. I could literally just try and figure that out on my own. That's what, kind of what adults do. Instead of college, at this point, you just kind of like renew your skills. You, you update them, you, you, get a, you get a book, 
Like, if you read the second edition college text in school, well, it's probably time to pick up a new copy of the fourth edition, you know, right? Probably. It's that. Cross your fingers for good luck. If any of you are having a birthday, I ask that you please blow out your candles and wish me the best of luck. You don't have to wish for my gecko. That's my job. You can wish me good luck. Then it'll transfer to him, okay? Osama bin Gecko. Born on August 5th of 2005. Okay, he was he was born a few weeks before that, but that's the day I bought him. Over across the street from Zia Records on Speedway. <sighs> All right, enough about that. So, what is it that really brings me here today? I don't know. Let me put it to you this way, okay? You'll probably understand. It's not too hard of a concept. It's not too difficult the thing to wrap your head around. I've had a lot of bad luck the past year, roughly. And uh I've been sick of it for a long time. Lately, I've been trying to be as zen as I can. You know, like Zay Zen. You know, I've been trying to let my thoughts float through my head like clouds in the sky. And I've been trying to just, you know, sleep when I'm tired, eat when I'm hungry. On top of that, if I feel the need to just I do that for however long I can and uh, I just I try to ground myself in the truth you know the truth I've shown it to you before. It's really easy these days. Instead of uh, duct tape, I'm using magnets. So, like, it's quite trivial. Quite trivial. It's elementary, my dear. Aw, oh, okay, so the top half is still taped down. But, you'll get, you know the message. This one right here. You've seen it before. Boy, that has really faded over the past fucking... This was uh, a 2006 calendar. <laughs> you can believe that. Not too unbelievable. 2006 is just about the perfect year for me to look at those motherfuckers what a couple of geeks right what a couple of nerds all rtfming the scrolls i'll bet those dudes never get laid unless they're butt fucking each other right like i give a shit dude everyday life is my practice i don't care about their everyday life
Oh yeah. So this right here is uh Did you hear me out there? I'm all like I'm taking my gecko to the vet and nothing's gonna stop me. I really think they're gonna help him this time. It's a pretty silly society we live in where like, you know, people can charge you money. Like, basically, everything should be a free consultation unless they can fix your problems, right? I basically paid $500 to three different outfits that did nothing. Oh, what does that mean, JJ? They must have done something. Oh, yeah, uh, assessment? Assessment is we need to conduct expensive scans. Ahem, that might be misleading. You know what that means. That means the combined total. It's not like each one was five. Okay. Don't be misled or confused. Okay, sorry for interrupting. <clears throat> one set expense, a thousand dollars worth of expensive scans. Also, I said I was uploading this, and obviously I'm streaming it. <laughs> yeah, I'm all I'm all streaming is so complicated, right? Even though when I tried to upload this, all I got was errors. So you know, that's pretty zen, right? What is JJ? I don't know. I hit a wall. And then I bounced off the wall and hit another wall. And then instead of going north and south, I went to the east and now I'm streaming. Because that north and south was uploading and I'm like, ow, I hate hitting walls. So then I went and started streaming. So, you know, I try not to contradict or lie or whatever. But, you know, if you're in the process of slamming into a wall and you're tired of that, you might end up, you know, it might seem like I'm lying or like misleading or tricking you, but you know, you know, it's like I'm made of rubber and the whole world's trying to glue me down. Either that or whack me like a baseball bat. And I just gotta go where I end up because I'm not really in control of that, so. All right, I promise no more interruptions until the end of this thing. Another one said euthanasia. I can't remember what the first one said. I, I think uh, it was basically something along the lines of, here's some painkillers in the form of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Bring me back his fecal matter and we'll see if he has parasites and uh you know it's pretty much determined that he doesn't have parasites he has like a tumor for whatever fucking reason man i don't think it's his fault i don't think it's my fault i don't know whose fault it is that he has a tumor i've sheltered him and protected him from all predators but you know there's some unseen evil. I don't know what it is. But whatever. That unseen evil can fuck off. Because you know. <clears throat> I don't care how evil the evil is. I don't believe in good and evil. And even the worst evil can be. Usually a biological creature can be remedied with the proper procedure. So. Hopefully. You can find a specialist that knows the procedure, if and when you need such a thing. If you know what I mean. I know how frustrating it can be when the world offers you nothing in exchange for what? Your dedication and loyalty? Your trust? You know? 
Look at it this way. I could have, like... I, I've, I've been pretty upset lately. I could have, like, taken my firearm and blown somebody away. Blown myself away. Used my computer hacker skills to plant some kitty porn on some random person's computer. Or, more specifically, hack into some pedophile's computer and take their kitty porn and expose it on something like Twitter. <laughs> but, you know, it's a really easy trick. That's a lot easier than taking someone's title and stealing it. Like, you see those advertisements on TV where they're all like, Oh, has somebody taken your title behind your back? Do you even know or have a clue? Well, we'll protect you. Or how about LifeLock? They're all like, Has your identity been stolen and sold on the dark web? Well, we'll reimburse you for any fraudulent charges that you might potentially be held accountable for. Oh, that's neat. Gee, I feel so privileged to have another worthless subscription that I shouldn't require to get by in a filthy fucking society that really rewards me with nothing. I provide my best rewards to myself. And this doctor that I'm going to go see, you know what? I know that's attached to society, but I don't credit society. I'm going to credit the doctor. Because if I credited society, I'd also blame society for the last three shitty ones I saw. It gave me nothing and emptied my wallet of 500 fucking dollars that I really needed for other things. So, that's how that works. I don't hate groups of people. I hate individuals. And I don't love groups of people. I love individuals. That's just the way it's got to be. Or else the balance falls all out of whack. And I can't do my everyday living. And that's all I want to practice. At the end of the day. And I'm just going to keep doing... I'm having good luck for once. And I'll, I'll stick with what I've been doing. Yeah, I'm just being zen. I, I eat when I'm hungry. I sleep when I'm tired. I practice everyday living, and if I feel the need for something, I follow my instinct and my gut and my heart and my brain, and I don't let outside influences influence me. I basically have faith in nothing, but at the same time, I have faith in myself, even when I'm at rock bottom. So... This is what the Catholic priest, Father Mike Martinez, taught me when I was this tall. If you can believe that. I was seeking a bass guitar mentor at the time. Why? I don't know, man. Here, here's how it worked out, okay? You know what it's like to have supportive parents, you know? The kind of parents that say, no matter what you decide, you can do no wrong. You're always going to be special to me, and I'm always going to support you in, in, in whatever decision you make. You ever have parents like that? That's cool. Good for you. My parents are like, we support you as long as you do what we want you to do. Okay? And that was easy, because my parents are kind of bohemian, like... My father is more like a, a, a hippie vato bohemian, where my mother is more like a meditative, get the fuck away from me bohemian. She'd rather be like the Beatles when they went into their swami phase, you know, and just meditate herself away from it all. And ultimately, she did that for a long time. Karma Pacheno, Karma Pacheno, Omene Pab Me Whom, Omene Pab Me What? Etc., 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 and that's really cool. Unfortunately, that kind of behavior distances you from the very people that are around you. In my humble opinion, I think if you can just be in the moment and zen and shit like that, maybe you don't have to be so distant, says the guy who still doesn't check his 
inboxes at all on a regular basis. Don't call me a hypocrite. I'm damaged. I'm really just sharing. I'm trying to do better. I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. I know I'm not perfect. I just told you one really major problem. And I know. I know. So this is uh, this was the very first baseline that he taught me. Check this out. You might like this. I don't know. Are you a fan of jazz music? This is kind of jazz. I was a fan of jazz music at the time. And it wasn't because of Lisa Simpson. I was into jazz before she was. Bleeding Gums Murphy? I was listening to the Jazz Crusaders and Miles Davis before that episode ever aired. Let's see. Whoops. Almost slid off my little chair here. No, I'm not amplified. That'd take too that's too much trouble. <laughs> Okay. Oh, by the way, it was on this very base. And and I carried it to his, like, little priestly fucking wing of the Our Lady of Sorrows church on the east side in that base case. I got this at Guitars Etc. It was a good deal. It was like a hundred bucks. Like my space base. It went something like this. A one, two, three, four. That's it. It's called a walking bass line. And the way he, that was the first lesson. And then when I picked it up real quick, he's all like, all right, hey, let's, uh, he said you wanted to know how to slap, how to slap a bass. And that's when I said, smack my bitch up, take my picture. I'm just kidding. Prodigy hadn't hit big yet. <laughs> Back in those days, it was more like the the Charlie record, you know, Charlie, nineteen ninety era, like Prodigy. But you want to slap bass? Fuck that! I want to smack my bitch up. By the way, I call my bass my bitch. So yes, teach me <laughs> what you know about slapping my bitch. All right. And like, uh, at first he's like, all right, let's see. He showed me how to just slap the open E. It's basically something like, oops. Here, let me mute the other strings. So it's a better demonstration than that. So he did that. But uh, he wanted to teach me how to pluck, because plucking goes along with slapping. Anyone would tell you that. Anyone from Les Claypool to Flea, so, or, what, Victor Wooten, uh, like, Getty Lee. I think he's, he knows how to slap. He doesn't throw it around much, but you know that guy knows how to do a thing or two. Um, maybe, like, Bootsy Collins. Like, any one of those people will tell you that plucking and slapping go together like, uh, like bubblegum and peanut butter. <laughs> Something like that. So I'm like, he's showing me like the... Something like that. 
you know, pretty basic. But, you know, he sat there and watched me do it. And then, like, he he kind of sat to the side and, and it said, look, if you hold your wrist more like this and you try to keep your thumb, you know, perpendicular like that, you know, like, don't keep your thumb like that. You know, don't keep your thumb like, don't 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 overextend like that. Just like as if your thumb is a is like a like a hammer. You know, it it needs to be sturdy. Sturdy. Like you can't move it. Nobody can move it. That's your thumb, <laughs> and it don't move no more. It's locked. It's just like... You know, something like that. I don't know, I was only 10 years old, it's hard to remember. Kind of started fucking around. He was like, "Oh yeah, you can do that. Let's see you do this." He wanted to make sure I could pluck on the so-called G string. You know, on a guitar, the G string would be called the fourth string. Guess what? On the bass guitar, it's called the fourth string too. I think. Right. Right. Wait a minute. I got it backwards. I do. It it would normally be the third string on a on a guitar, and it would be the uh, the um, first string on the bass, right? I got a pack of strings over there. I can go check. You know I have dyslexia, right? <laughs> it's not a joke. If you feel like you have dyslexia, I'd recommend you go to your disabled student resources office and talk to a counselor. My counselors were Jane Irie and Paul Chamberlain, and they were very helpful. Paul, Paul uh, wore hearing aids and was a little bit uh, hearing impaired, but he could still read my lips and give me good advice. And Jane, um, I don't know if she had any, she didn't have any noticeable handicaps or disabilities that I knew of. And she just, uh, was a, a nice lady that wanted to make sure I had everything I needed to be, to do my best. Because she knows how hard it can be sometimes to do your best. So, anyways, I'd like to think that this is my best. This is a song that Les Claypool plays. I mean, it's not my best, but it's pretty groovy. I like to think I do a good rendition of this song called The Riddles Abound Tonight. I'm paraphrasing it, if you will. It goes a little something like... Oops. My bad. Do over in three, two, one... Oops. <laughs> what did I knock over? Okay. You notice what I did wrong the first time, right? I was like one step too high on the fretboard. I should have been further closer to the headstock. My bad. It's a good thing I can play by ear, right? Father Mike didn't teach me that. Yeah, that takes a whole lot of practice and listening to music and listening to yourself and trusting yourself. All right, I'll see you later. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ on a toothpick. That was a pretty good video, right? Goddamn, goddamn. Say what? Goddamn devil bless it. 
you know I don't believe in good and evil. One of those people will tell you that plucking and slapping go together like uh, like bubblegum and peanut butter. <laughs> Something like that. So I'm like, he's showing me like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? I can't hear you, JJ. It's okay. Because, check it out, you guys. Now... Even though, even though that, what? Something like that, you know? Pretty basic. Who knows? But, we you know, couldn't hear he things. He sat there and watched me do it. And then, like, he, he kind of sat to the side and, and it said, look, if you hold your wrist more like this and you try to keep your thumb, you know, perpendicular like that, you know, like, don't keep your thumb like that. You know, don't keep you your thumb. Uh, don't 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 overextend like that. Lost the one like as if your thumb is a is like a like a hammer. So yeah. why don't you kill me? Yeah, it needs to be sturdy. Aww, and then sturdy. Oh, I'm gonna lose that baby. So why don't you? Like you can't move it. Nobody can move it. That's your thumb, <laughs> and it don't move no more. Mm. It's locked. It's just like, it's okay, you guys. I know, you're probably disappointed. You're probably like, oh, great, JJ uploaded another fucked up video that's unwatchable. There's no context. You can kind of hear some knocking. That noise suppression, you know, something like that. Yeah, I exactly. Know, I'm 10 years old, it's something hard to remember. Like kind of started fucking around. He was like, oh yeah, you can do that. Let's see you do this. He wanted to make sure I could fuck uh -huh. on the so-called G What's string. What's up with the desktop you audio? Know, on a guitar, the What's G up with that shit, with yo? Fourth fuck that shit, man. It goes a little something like, uh, One, two, three, four. I was supposed to go back to that part. Hey, I didn't write it. I think Les Claypool did. One, two, three. And then back to another doom. And it's the riddles are bound. It's all. Yeah, that guy's such a weird singer. Les Claypool. Yeah, he's just like totally as weird as he wants to be. And if you go hang out with him, he's all like, yeah, let's go fishing in the stream. Did you see that on MTV when they did the buzz clips? They're like, we're here at Les Claypool's freaking recording compound, and we're going to see what he's up to. Hey, Les, thanks for having us over. Hey, let's go fishing. I thought your name was Les, not John. Come on, man, don't mess around. Let's grab your pole. Like that kind of shit. Yeah. You know how Les Claypool <laughs> uh, um, strings up his fishing line and does his hook? I mean, I know a little bit about fishing. Looks a little bit like this. It's like, imagine I got like a hook right there. This is Les Claypool. He's all like, He's like, he looks like that, man. I think he's about ready to drop the fucking thing. So, I guess as a special added bonus, okay, take this out. This is from uh, Stevie Wonder, as as interpreted by Flea. Because.
Oops. That was flat. I was. That's what I get for looking away, right? You know what? If I was standing up, you know, it all pretty much... You get the feel, like... For preachers, keep on preaching. And then, like, it goes like, uh... Oops. God damn it, I did the same thing. this time <sighs> it didn't break anything all right and you know that's when uh, John for Shantae's all like I know you've seen the video yeah you know flea he's wearing the same pants in that video higher ground same pants that he's wearing in the young MC video bust the move yeah if you can believe that <laughs> I'll check you later that was fun looking like you was point Dexter bases pumping That guy is, he is, it's true. When he says society offers him nothing and that he provides himself with the biggest kicks of all. <sighs> You're a good guy, he doesn't lie to me. He don't lie to me, cause he don't lie to himself, does he? He's all like, look at me, I, I'm not a hypocrite, I'm broken. Uh, you know, and I'm look, he, I, whatever dude, is that the Avengers looking all strong and like confident and shit? Like, he's talking about the thumb, like it's a hammer and you can't move it, nothing can move it, you know. That's how it feels, right? I think we all know if some asshole grabbed my thumb and went crank, I'd be in pretty bad shape, wouldn't I? Good thing that hasn't happened yet. You know how I avoid that situation? I don't stick my thumb out towards strangers. <laughs> Especially... <laughs> you know what? I can't tell you how to live your life and how to judge people. You know, I'll say, don't stick your thumb out at anybody. Because any one of them could bust your thumb right off your fucking hand. And then where would you be, huh? You sure couldn't hitchhike after that, could you? And then you're walking down the street going, oh man, my life really sucks. I could use a ride, and I can't even ask for one. It just looks like I'm jerking off, right? Because I got no thumb because some asshole ripped it off, right? And lo and behold, there's a serial killer in your town that specializes in hitchhikers. And though it really hurts to lose your thumb, it saves you from the, the hitchhiker serial killer. Isn't that life for you? Turn the page. As that Seeger guy would say. Or Metallica, whichever one you listen to. I don't care you can listen to whichever one or both of them or none of them whatever suits you for me personally I'd rather listen to the Seeker version and I'd rather Metallica disappear from planet Earth 
but, you know, that's not gonna happen. Why do I hate Metallica so much? I don't know. Hate's a strong word. I prefer to say despise. I said that on the previous stream. <laughs> that's funny. Because it's true, and I did. And, like... Yeah, what's to despise, huh? Gee, I don't know. You tell me. You know, I was having a rough time earlier. When I tried to upload those videos, and it failed twice in a row. You know, that was like... That kind of sucked. That was almost like a bad omen if I believed in such things. Right? But... Just having a rough time. Got a lot of unsure... I'm not very sure of the future. And the past... It's already happened. Some of it very recently even. And you know, I can't say it's all been good. I'd rather not do the math than try to calculate, okay, uh, bad shit versus good shit. Because I just told you about the hypothetical hitchhiker scenario. That sounds pretty bad to lose your thumb, right? But who knows what price you might have to pay in the future just to just to keep going on, right? It's fucked up, right? Makes you want to know the storyline right now. Hey, can I flip to the last page already? What the fuck, man? I, f I feel like, you know, people talk about, oh, you just do anything anybody says. You follow trends. You take orders. You're just like a puppet on a string, right? Some You've ever heard that one? How's about, hey, you're like a puppet on a string blowing in the wind all over the fucking place. What about that one, huh? You ever consider that one? That's even worse. At least when you're a puppet on a string, somebody's making you dance. When you're a puppet on a string blowing in the wind, you're just, Wah! Wah! Wacky, wavy, inflatable man! Wah! And that's pretty chaotic. If you're not comfortable in a mosh pit, you definitely wouldn't like being a wacky, wavy, inflatable arm man, would you? It's very uncertain. It's all up in the air. Like, like that, up in the air. I'm trying to be fun. Because nobody likes a Debbie Downer, right? I mean, shit, TwitchCon just happened. There's a lot of exciting and uplifting good shit out there. Right? Isn't there? There better be. There fucking better be. You know, every time I ever went to a convention... Let me tell you about that. I told you I started uh, going to... the. Let's just say, let's just use DEF CON 6 as an example. That was the first one. What, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And then I never went back. Kind of miss it. Why did I go so many consecutive years? Because every time I went, it reinvigorated me. Like... It was almost the perfect timing. If you can believe that. Why is that, JJ? Because 365 days are, are basically the perfect amount. That's the exact number of days that it takes to take me. Like a, I'm standing tall and proud like a mighty red tree or whatever kind of tree. An oak tree. How about a saguaro cactus, alright? Like, I start out on the first day like that, and 365 days is about all that it takes to go BAM 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 
It turned me into pulp. Oh, but on the 364th day, let's go to DEF CON, baby. That ought to be good. And, you know, it, it was. I was such a bad boy. You know what's good about being a bad boy? It's more exciting than, like, getting pounded into pulp. That's for sure. Which is... A lot of times, that's what society's had to offer me. I know there's a lot of well-intentioned people. That's why I tell you. I don't blame you. Specifically. I have very specific people to blame for a lot of the reasons why I would take that pulp-like form. Of course, a lot of those people were only following the social cues. I know, it sucks to be such a conformist, right? Or does it? Eh? If they look happy, I'll emulate them. If they look powerful, I'll emulate them. If, if they are successful, I'll emulate them. If, if, if they are my authority figures, I'll emulate them. Fuck, man, I'll emulate my dog. Let me... Oh, I can't reach my balls. Son of a bitch. I guess I, I won't be emulating my dog today. Alright, Fido. What about your girlfriend? You know, uh, never mind. I'm not touching that with a ten foot pole. That's what people usually say to that. You, ever heard? you know what a ten foot pole is, right? It's like a telephone pole. That's all that means. What's got you down, JJ? I already told you uncertainty about the future. Why are you so uncertain? You seem so confident in your video. Well, dude, if you could play bass like that, wouldn't you be confident when you have a bass in your hands? That's like, that's like if, you, if you're that dude in the WGC, that's the Street Fighter 4 tournament, and the best Street Fighter 4 guy in the world. Like, that guy, he got kicked off the show. It's like, you know, you may be number one when you got a Street Fighter 4 controller in your hands, but what if it's not that time? You, I may be number one when I got that space base in my hands. What happens when it's not that time? That's that's a good question. I should probably try my hardest to make make it make it space based time twenty four seven, right? That would probably solve that problem. Perhaps. Dude, I'm so scared and like uh unsure and and still hurting from the past. Like how far into the past? How far do you got? Want to hear something funny? Check this out. Have you ever seen that movie, Howard the Duck? It's like an excellent, uh, it's basically satire. And I'm glad I looked up that word yesterday, because now I can <laughs> whip it out satire I know it I don't have to look it up again I had to refresh my mind and so uh, yeah Howard the Duck is kind of like satire science fiction with really good special effects film special effects I mean it's not like Spielberg made the thing but hey man it's getting there it's it's like it's it's not that bad it's it's actually pretty good it's not Lucas or Spielberg or whatever, but it, you know what? It's it's pretty good. Maybe Cronenberg. You ever seen one of his flicks? It might be as good as one of his. 
Like, Cronenberg isn't like fucking Spielberg or Lucas, but you know what? He makes you think, doesn't he? Not to mention that, but he got Debbie Harry to be in that scene with that one guy that's on Family Guy, you know? That they named the high school after. And you know what she does in that movie. I mean, that's like... And she was so, so, uh, so young and fresh. That was a perfect opportunity to capture Debbie Harry's essence. You know? Like, uh, yeah, here's my essence. I'm all used up and burnt out and just about ready for somebody to put their foot out on me. Or maybe just like snub me out in this tray, right? Too bad you guys didn't get more video of me like 10 years ago, dude, when we were doing Punk Rock Tuesdays downtown. Like, fuck, man. I should have been filming 24 7 back then. I was very strong. That was when I met my guitar student. And, uh, that reminds me. That was kind of a ripoff. That, those last two videos, like the first video sucked. The second video was a little bit better, but it, they were still both ripoffs, weren't they? I think they were, honestly. I mean, like, look, this is pretty difficult. It's it's about to rain outside. I'm trying to repair that that HEPA air filter right there. Because the motor burnt out, right? The motor burnt out? Why that? I don't fucking know. It's cheap. I have another unit like that. It was like last, the year before, or the year before before. Like, that motor works. You see that one in the corner over there? You see it right there? That motor still works. Granted, it's wimpier than that one. That one is a stronger motor and sucks more filthy shit out of the air that makes my nose run and makes my eyes water. So that's why I look like this. It's not because I've been like, boo-hoo. It's, it's my filthy, dirty air. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And, and this is my amplifier. Fender. I'm a fan of Fender. You know that. I got a Stratocaster right fucking there. Here, check this out. Here's how I feel about that, okay? This is how I feel about that. That out! Boom! Suck it. <laughs> it's so inappropriate, JJ. I know, right? It made me feel better for a second. You know what the nice thing about being inappropriate is? It changes your state. Just about anything. When you're on the rails, conforming to every little fucking thing, you're totally stuck in your state, aren't you? And the only way to break out of it is to just fly off the fucking rails. You know, it's like Ozzy says, I'm going off the rails on a crazy train. If you've ever heard that song, it sounds a little something like, I'm going off the rails on a crazy train. And then the guitar's all do and then And then he says it one more time. He's all, I'm going off the rails on a crazy train. And like, the funny thing is, is, if you think about it rationally, it's more like he's going off the rails on the same train, right? He says crazy train, but really, it's the same train, because you're like, on the same train, chugga 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 chugga, sane, conformist 
chugga 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 status quo chugga 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 and like you know everything seems fine right until those bandits uh you know put some dynamite on the train tracks and then they ride up on their stallions and they and they pull out their six shooters and stick them to the conductor's head and say stick them up we're gonna go walk through your train here all the way to the caboose and we're gonna take everything there is that's not nailed down oh shit that's not a very sane train is it it's just a hypothetical situation that has occurred you know it has if not in movies or, or if not in real life at least in the movies right Hey, you ever seen South Park when Cartman's all wiggy wiggy wild west, wild west, wee wow wild, wild, wild west, wild wild west? That 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 uh that Will Smith movie's so steampunk, isn't it? Who me? Dude, don't get me started. You're gonna make me cry again. Dude, I'll be steampunk. Where'd my goggles go? You saw me earlier, right? <laughs> These are brand new goggles, dude. Wiggy wiggy wild west, wild west, wild wild west. West side. Uh, pretty dope, right? Granted, they suck. Dude, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. What kind of a fucking nose bridge is that? That's garbage. And you see that? You see how there's nothing holding it to my face? You know why that is? It's because all that it came with was an elastic strap. That'll probably make my ears go raw. Or, or the side of my scalp. It's garbage. Isn't it? It's totally garbage. It's a piece of shit. I might as well just like throw it on the ground, step on it, smash it to a million pieces and say what a waste of five dollars, right? That's what life feels like, doesn't it? It's it's not what you wanted, it's not what you expected, and it's basically garbage. I know. It's such a letdown. I'm hoping though. Maybe just maybe I can take the garbage. Maybe. Check it out. I had to I had to remove the arms off this one pair of shades. Or, not these. These are my faves. They're my safety shades. They keep me safe. I'm not gonna fuck with these. They keep me safe. But like these arms, they came off a pair of safety shades I got for two bucks. I kind of like them, but they're the safety shades with the arm that's wide enough to fucking connect to these, you know? Look at that. See, that's where the elastic went, right? And I know, I don't know if it's going to take hot glue. I don't know if it's going to take a screw. You know what I did earlier? I tried this number. Try this trick and spin it. I stuffed it through like that, right? And then I'm like all like... Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, almost works. But I can do better than that. I can. And I will. It's so it's it's very difficult. Yeah. It's cool though. You know what's not difficult? <laughs> Yeah, let's see if I can do a little better than the last two attempts. Maybe. And I don't care if I get zero watchers. Or a zero million. Isn't that a funny number? That's basically like the same number, isn't it? <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 11, 12. Oh, what happened to 10? And it's zero, dude. It's a total zero number. It's got a zero in it. But it's got a one as well. Nah. It gets negated by the zero, dude. 
It's a zero number, and that'll never be worth anything. <laughs> One is the loneliest number, two is the blah 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 number, and ten, that's a pretty bad number too. Because even though it thinks it's a winner, it's still attached to a zero. Poor ten. It really is a great number. The entire decimal number system is basically indebted to it. Like when you use your fingers and your toes, you know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, but that's when I used my toes. Yeah. The entire decimal system is indebted to the number 10, but it's still attached to a zero. And it's still a loser number, isn't it? It'll never be anything more than a zero. No matter how many ones you add to it, it could be like 11,110, and it's still a loser number because it's attached to a zero. Am I right? Am I right? Tell me I'm right, or I'll beat the fuck out of you. You loser! I'll give you a wedgie that'll make your ass crack split in half. Like as if a lumberjack took an axe to your ass crack, you nerd, you fucking dweeb. You don't even know. You don't even know! You loser, you fucking faggot, you fucking piece of shit, you fucking nigger, you white trash little garbage boy. You fucking, oh, you whore, you whore, you little slut. You're never gonna be more than a stripper, just a worthless whore, girl. You're never gonna be nothing. Jeez, that's a little extreme, dude. What the fuck? I thought we were talking about numbers. It's all the same. Because what is a number? What is a number? How about your income, you little bitch? You ignorant little fucking rich kid? Why don't you suck my balls? I got two of them. Tell me about numbers. I got two balls, one cock. Why don't you suck on all three? You little fucking privileged rich fuck! I'll kill you! If I get the chance! That's what the world will treat you like. That's what they call the, the cruel hard world out there? Fuck man, it might be different. I don't know anymore. I, I, I locked my door a few years ago during COVID lockdown. I don't know. I don't hang out on the street too much no more. I got tired of it. I got my orbital bone fractured. I got my heart broken. And I almost got my soul sucked out of me. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, well, you know, it's soul. Soul is a metaphor for the fire inside that just made me do that. If you can't like if you don't, have, if you go, you might have a fire inside. Yeah, way to let me know. What do you? How are you gonna show me your fire inside? If all you can do is, yeah, you're gonna throw down a really big pinball score. Good for you, kid. You know what the fucked up thing about a really big pinball score is? Nobody has any context because nobody gives a fuck about the pinball table that you're godlike on. And you know, the thing about a guitar is everybody can hear it, everybody knows it, they can't deny it. And, and like whether you're playing Rocksmith or not, you know, let's face it, there's no scoreboard when you're just shredding, is there? It's, it's really just like a big fucking competition it's always it always goes back to that doesn't it except when you're up there with your family with the people that never try to compete against you that really are there to uplift you, you know? I need a cigarette really bad I'm pacing back and forth throwing slurs at you because I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to get a guitar cable. 
could really use a road crew. And, uh, what, here in the studio? You know, I don't know how, man. Hey, how does this sound? You ever seen the South Park episode where the underpants gnomes, you know, basically have this secret, uh, you know, corporate economy thing where they, they steal underpants and they resell them and, you know? Okay, how does this sound? How about I prove to the underpants gnomes that I'm the ultimate super thief and then they all just decide to work for me because they want to learn my tricks. That would be great if underpants gnomes actually existed, right? Because that's about how small you'd have to be to fit in here, right? <laughs> I don't even fit in here. I'm still grateful. Shit, man. It's not ideal, but at the same time, I still don't have to go out there and get my soul sucked up, do I? Fuck, man. I know, I look so confident. In the, you know what? I'm rebuilding it right now. By calling you names and putting you down. Except I'm not really putting you down. I'm more like throwing examples at you. You know, of what they'll throw at you sometimes. And, and you gotta be ready for it. And you gotta just like... It's kinda like... Uh, oh, damn it, where am I... Hold on a sec. I gotta find this. I gotta focus. Hold on one second. Where did I? Oh, here's that. And then last but not least. All right. Did I get the power cable? But I don't have the audio cable. Do I? I want to sit my ass down, and I don't want to get back up. 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 Because if I get back up... <sighs> well, that wasn't a very good plan if I have to get back up. No, no. How embarrassing. <laughs> Hopefully. You know, until it turns bad, you might as well assume it's all good, right? I've said that before. I say it's all good until everything turns tragically wrong, right? You better believe it. It's all good. For the next five minutes. What's happening in five minutes? That's when the... That's when... That's when shit goes down. If I were you, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Man. I don't even want to go there. But I think you know what I mean. There's no reason to go there. Too soon. It's too soon, right? Here. Here's a good example. All right, you don't want to be here in five minutes because that's when the extraterrestrials invade and enslave humanity using their ultra-realistic human replicant copy duplicate machines. And, uh, yeah, it'd be best just not to be here when that happens. When humanity gets enslaved by the uh, offending uh, outside force, Okay, dude. Wow, you've seen one too many sci-fi movies, JJ. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. For a gang war? Oh. Way to let me down and bum me out, JJ. You just had to reveal the secret. Way to go, Mr. Oz. If you think that's a downer, why don't you go uh, audition for that TV show, Oz, that HBO one. That's probably a real downer. Of course, I've heard Orange is the New Black, so it might not be that bad. It might be trendy. It might be. I guess you don't know until you 
I guess you don't know how bad hell is until you go to hell. I don't know. I don't know. I don't believe in such things, really. I think it's a it's a crazy control device. It's a fucking uh, made up thing. It's like when my father. Check this out. My father used to take off his belt. If I was being extra hyperactive and crazy, he'd take off his belt like this, right? And you know what he'd do? He'd loop it around like that. And he'd go, hey son, calm down or else. And that was enough to keep me in line. No shit. Instantly always fell in line. And I just stood there like a, like a mannequin. As opposed to whatever the fuck I was doing. I'm like, I don't know what I did to piss you off, Father, but I'm certainly not going to do it now. That looks really bad. He never had to hit me once. It's like the fear of going to hell, right? It's like, you know what? I don't know and I don't want to find out, do I? Until that one day when you do have to find out and then you say, you know what? Hell ain't that bad. Shit, man. I could start a business here. I could, like, I could get all these demons working for me. Hell ain't shit. Why have I been fearing this place my whole life when in actuality I've been through worse? You know? What do you do then? Huh? 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 You know, I think you should just go home and lock your door, maybe. Because it's all fucked up, upside down, backwards, and, and, and it's like, it's like the puppet on the string scenario, but it's really more like a puppet blowing in the wind scenario. Like, puppet blowing in a hurricane? That's, that's, that's more accurate. Jesus Christ, man. You know, if I, if I tell you to be careful, I'm just going to sound paranoid, and you're going to say, that guy, he's just a big scaredy cat. And then when you wind up, oh, fucking, whatever, man, whatever, whatever, I'm not going crazy, you're going crazy. If I was going crazy, I would be the one dying, and you wouldn't be, would it? Would that, wouldn't that be the case? I'm the sane one, because I don't die. I'm actually getting good at not dying. Normally when you don't die, you get the survivor guilt. And that's like, uh, it's totally irrational. Why on earth would anyone ever feel guilty about being alive, right? I don't know. You know what? Don't. Because it's irrational and it, it's not appropriate. Unless you're responsible for a whole lot of people's deaths, or, or for that matter, unless you're responsible for one death, you really shouldn't be feeling any guilt at all. Especially survivor guilt. It's completely irrational, and it's bullshit. And you can just take your survivor guilt, and you can shove it wherever you can. I don't care. Shove it in an ostrich head hole. Shove it in a rabbit hole. Shove it in your nostril. Shove it up your asshole. Shove it up your cunt. Shove it in your eyeball. Shove it in your ear hole. Hey, t tell you what. Why don't you shove it in a black hole? Maybe then it'll go away forever and we'll never have to deal with it or see it ever again. Until that black hole eventually re-expands again. And then, oh shit, we'll just be covered with it. Right? That survivor guilt. The entire galaxy will be covered with it if you put it in a black hole. Don't do that. My bad. I'm not a physicist. I don't always know what to do with toxic materials like that. You know. What are you doing, JJ? Come back. Come back. It's okay. You got your tobacco, you got your amplifier, you got your guitar, your space bass. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm trying to skateboard in here without the skateboard. 
I mean, you know, I got the Mario deck right there, but I'm not on top of it. <laughs> I'm trying to skateboard away from this bad feeling of impending doom. Oh, it's all good. Here on the Zat the Avenger Rules channel, I gotta brighten up if we're on the ZTA channel. If we're on the J if Triple Zero One channel, I could just go all the way down the rabbit hole, the downward spiraling rabbit hole. I made a 12-hour stream yesterday, and some of it's really good, and some of it's dangerous. I don't know why. It's just real life. I'm not like. You know what's more dangerous is when I was calling you all those names that you might potentially get called someday. You know what's worse than being called names? When people are calling you those names and kicking you in the ribs because they've already knocked you down on the ground and you're curled up in the fetal position. That's even worse than bad name calling. If you can believe that. Oh my. Ooh. Oh. I didn't mean to put that there. So, you know. What do you do when you got damaged old people, right? What did they do with all those World War II veterans that had shell shock? Let me guess. It, all they had to do was put on their bomber jackets and their In-N-Out burger hats and we all saluted them and said you're a hero and that's when they stopped like shaking and crying <laughs> yes I am way to go war hero why don't you go kill somebody new you gray panther you baby killer oh shit that's fucked up JJ they're defending our freedom what freedom? What fucking freedom? The freedom to get treated like shit? The freedom to live like like a white trash poor person that, that can't do anything with their life? That can't get out of the ghetto? You know, I guess traditionally um, it's the it's the 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 African American urban element in the big city that can't escape the ghetto. Well, what about the, the, the poor white trash element that can't escape the trailer park? I think Kid Rock represented them, and everybody thinks he's a gigantic jackass, right? You know why that is. It's because they're all jealous that he got to hook up with Pamela Lee Anderson, and they didn't. That's what that is. Like, fuck that guy. He's an ass clown. His songs don't even make any sense. No, there's not one hook worth dancing to the drum beats they're garbage the, the whole thing is just trash he has nothing good to say you're probably right you're probably right i need to make a cigarette and i can't focus this is this is kid rock <laughs> come on you know which one i'm gonna play right the one that's all about the, the junkies and the whores and the, the crackheads and the and the and the and the headbangers or whatever the fuck they sing about in that song. Excuse me. I gotta focus. I'm trying not to self destruct in a in a in a in a survivor guilt frenzy of no logic whatsoever. In a frenzy of emotion and regret. Yeah, that's more like it. That's what it feels like. But when it comes to emotion and regret, you have no control. When it comes to logic, you might have that much control. And and tell you can't compute. I can't comp I got I got a, I got a I got an infinite loop. Not really. That's more of an AI problem. No, humans don't get stuck in infinite loops. They get stuck in like an if-else statement, you know? It's like, if this, then that, if else, though. 
but I don't know because it's so uncertain undetermined ah you're stuck at the fork in the road man it's just like the crossroads with the, like the kid that played the karate kid Ralph Macchio you ever see that movie with the devil and the it's just like that man except it's basically in your heart soul and mind so uncertain of it all it's fucked up dude Try to avoid it. I wouldn't recommend it. Try to stay on the rails. The crazy train rails? I don't know, man. Some kind of rails. Jesus Christ, why don't you just go sniff some rails? I really don't give a fuck. I'm trying to just hold it together. For fuck's sake. It's really... It's, it's an exercise. I should have, like, you know, I crashed out earlier and all I had were nightmares, so don't blame me. I'm only human. Okay. My name is Kid Rock. Is there a cover of that song? Because I don't want to get a copyright thingy, Mer Bob. You know what I mean? What's that song called anyway? Isn't it called like Cowboys, like the fucking Kid Rock Cowboy or some bullshit like that? I don't know. Um, hit there. How does that sound? He did a, a bawada bada. Cowboy. It is called Cowboy. Son of a bitch. I got that one right. Double Jeopardy, Alex. <laughs> okay. Um, if this works out, I might just have to look up an orbital cover. You know what I mean? Cause, I mean, I might play. I'm trying to make a fucking cigarette here. It'd be nice if I had a pack, right? Except if I had a pack, it would probably be Marlboro's, and you know, those will kill you quicker than anything. It, <clears throat> what? Uh, anybody got a lucky strike hand? I could use some good luck. A pack of luckies, that's bound to be lucky, right? Man. Yippee ki yay yay. Yippee ki yay yay. Yippee ki yay yay yay. The fuck is this bullshit? Alright, let's see if this sucks. I'll bet it sucks. I'll bet it's garbage. The fuck is this garbage?
said hell yeah. is so ridiculous. I'll bet it was probably Dinner. muted. Muted. It's more than just a meal. It's a chance to slow down and catch your breath. Oh, okay. To be fully present in the moment. I can't agree. Today, I, I can't deny it. I'll show you how easy it is to practice mindfulness as you cook by sure. focusing on your five senses. Sure. Yeah, right. You can do this with any HelloFresh recipe. Is that what people are into what now? What do you see? Notice how the water boils. How the pasta softens. People are so lazy. I'll tell you how to make that. Okay, so you take a, a package of semolina flour. My favorite is Bob's Bargain Mill. Because semolina flour, it, it can be hard to find, but that is the most mass-produced, and it's in the most stores in the United States of America, the Bob's Bargain Mill, and it, and it won't kill you. It's not bad. It's, it's genuine semolina flour. You could get away with the traditional, like, what, gold metal flour? Isn't that the, the stuff, like, uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy, like... If you if you open up a bag of gold metal, the Pillsbury Double goes woo and jumps into it and just rolls around like a wacky, wavy, inflatable arm man, and then he gets a hard on, and that's when you get to. I mean, like what? That's like what you should use, right? But no, semolina, and then you take an egg, like one egg, and then you take a tablespoon of olive oil. Oh wait, well, how, what's the measurement for the semolina flour, JJ? Dude, you don't measure flour. Don't you get it? Flour is like an intuition thing. It's like you get your, your wet ingredients and then you add flour until it feels right. That's how that works. If you want to measure the... If you want to put the perfect amount of flour in, you're never going to get it. Never going to get it, never going to get it, never going to get it. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. You know? That's how flour works, dude. <laughs> and a lot of people, they like to take that olive oil or whatever oil, and they will like, they'll, they'll take like a, a bowl, whether it's made out of like clay or metal. A stainless steel bowl is pretty nice. I think that's what I would prefer. But you know, there's something about stainless steel. It's very clean, isn't it? And it kind of reminds me of Judas Priest, like, and they rock. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Right? Hope that wasn't too loud. But so, like, a nice stainless steel bowl, that's where you can knead up your semolina, maybe. And that's it. It's like some salt, small olive oil, um, the semolina, and the egg. And, and as you're mixing that together, coming up with a perfect consistency, which would be like, it's like you don't want a big clumpy ball. Fuck no. You don't want to make a basketball. You want to make like the flowers should be separate. But you, it should start to formulate little chickpeas. You know, like like little clumps. Once it's once you get the once you got the the that consistency, don't add any more flour. It's all gonna fall apart, okay? Really, you start out with the clumpy basketball and you just keep adding the semolina until you got the chickpea granularity. And then what do you do? You extrude it. 
and you make whatever you want. You want macaroni, you want spaghetti, you want linguine. Dude, uh, you know what the easiest thing to make is? It's lasagna. Why is that, JJ? Because all you need is a rolling pin. And what, you want to add broccoli? Dude, vegetarian lasagna is fantastic. If you can get some Normandy vegetables, which consists of like carrots, broccoli, cauliflower. Some Normandy vegetables are basically perfect for vegetarian lasagna. And depending on how hardcore you are, you can either make your own fucking marinara sauce like a real man. <laughs> or you can just go use whatever. Go get some Prego for all I fucking care. You don't care. You're just gonna order it from them, aren't you? You don't take any pride in your work, do you? You just you just ride the rails, you rich, spoiled, privileged fuck. You know what I would do if I were you? I'd do the same thing, probably. You lucky bastard. I'll bet, I'll bet you are a bastard. I'll bet you're an accident. My parents planned me. Way to go, rich kid. You got a privileged life and you're an accident. I'm actually wanted. If you can believe that. I don't have proof. But I don't think my folks lied to me. Why did they tell me that? That's totally TMI. Too much information? Yeah, thanks. Whatever. I guess they thought maybe I'd be a good Christian if I knew that, right? You, you, I'm like a chosen person. I'm like a Jew. You saw my comment earlier on Reddit with regards to Rodney Mullen, the Judeo-Christian, and the Zionist viewpoints with regard to, like, Yahweh and all that bullshit that I could give a fuck about, dude. I told you, I hate people on an individual level, and I love them on an individual level. And I'm scared of them on an individual level. And I, I feel dissed by them on an individual level. And I miss them on an individual level. It's all the same bullshit every day. All day, every day. Same bullshit. All day, every day. <sighs> Try this trick and spin it. Damn, I'm good. Didn't have to get off my ass. <laughs> yeah, baby. Spoken like a real stoner. Dude, I wish I had some weed. That would be relaxing. Reach, I'm unhooking the bra right now. I think I did it. Let's see them tit, let's feel them titties. You know, in an ideal world, you'd never have to, like, do that maneuver, right? In an ideal world, you'd just say, hey, bitch, turn around. Let me unhook your fucking bra and whip out them titties, right? I want to smell those peanuts. Yeah, got them stinky titties, them stinky titties. Yeah, them titties smelling like a garbage can with uh, with some alley cats prowling around in it with an open can of you got them stinky titties. Smells like uh, smells like some armpits with no deodorant. <laughs> you got them stinky titties. Just turn around. Let me unhook it already. But you're too busy trying to make out, right? Way to multitask. That's what they want you to do. Keeps you nice and distracted from all the suffering. You'd be like, I'm just trying to get a piece. Right? Kids are still into that? I don't know. What's my goddamn... I threw it over here. Is this what I'm looking... No, that's the rocksmith cable. Bomb, tick, bomb, dang, dang, diggy, diggy. With the blood, the upchuck, the boogie. 
<laughs> what? I, hey, dude, I just did it all for the nookie, okay? But don't look at me. I'm only human. I'm only human. Don't put the blame on me. Dude, you saw me throw the cable over here, right? You know what? I'm think I'm looking for a bundled up cable like this. But in actuality, the cable I threw over here was more like a speaker cable. Here it is. Son of a bitch. All I had to do was look down. I probably did, but I didn't recognize it because I was looking for the coiled up cable. You know what I'm saying. You could have it under your nose, staring you in the face, right? And you're still just like, huh? That don't look right. Those aren't the titties I was expecting. I was expecting like some Wonder Bra titties, but then that, these look more like goat tits, right? Whatever, dude. Just like suck them like there's no tomorrow, because there is no tomorrow. It's all just one really long day that never fucking ends, it seems. Way to hook me up with a broken amp, bro. Rest in pieces. Roughly? No. This thing works. I'm just sour. I'm a sour, sour old man. Oh, you know what? It's probably my squid. You guys ever own a squid? How about a squid billy? That's my squid. I think it's plugged in because it doesn't want to go any further. Put the button. There, now it's on. Some bitch. Hey, hey Dad, don't be wrong. Right? Early Kyler. <laughs> that shit. Boy, man, I haven't seen that in a coon's age. What kind of coon? A really old raccoon, like, that is so old now it's like a hat, like the kind that Davy Crockett wore <laughs> or whatever. That kind of a coon's age. You didn't get to hear the priest lick, dude. Not Judas priest, the fucking Catholic priest. Wonder if that guy's dead. Everybody's dead. Fuck, man. When am I gonna join them? Oops. One, two, three, four, take it from the top end. Uh, uh, chick the bump bump the boogie boogie up, Chuck. doing that. It's not right. Take it from the top. One, two, three, four. Thank <laughs> you. 
a weird kind of good. It's a good that fills you as opposed to a good that empties you. I don't know, man. It's hard to describe. I know it fills my ears. Here, let's go back to that one. fun isn't that fun it almost feels like skeet 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 all over your fucking eardrums motherfucker take it you're drenched in it That one, that's a neat trick. You hear it's all wah 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 wah. That's the neck bow thing I was talking about in the last stream, that 12 hour one. Oh, it's so muffly, listen to that. I was talking about that in that 12 hour stream too. If you're gonna slap it better Like it does something like a and then it goes like a hold on hold on hold on at, at the uh, dude. oh man I can hear it I can feel it and the wind cries Show me that one, and then he's all like, uh, he'd show me that one that's all like, uh, it's difficult because I've heard different versions, and I kind of want to play them both at the same time. It's like I'm all mixed up inside. It's like a... It's almost like I want to play Mother mixed with like all along the watchtower mixed with like, uh, you know, a pop punk riff, maybe some Blue 182 mixed with like, this is something that'll make you bleed. And that's not nice. I don't want to make you bleed. I want to make them bleed. Who's them? Who's ever responsible for this mess I'm in? You want me to take personal accountability? I usually do. It's just real difficult when I'm like, what did I do wrong this time? Check it out. I was, okay, so my old man's showing me like Jimi Hendrix songs. My uncle, he's showing me shortcuts, right? He's all like, all right, check it out, mijo. Your old man told you about the L, right? I'm like, are you talking about La Bamba, Uncle? Are you talking about La Bamba, Uncle? He's like, yeah, that L. You know, the... Para, para la La Bamba. Para la La Bamba. Se necesito una boca de gracia. Una boca de gracia. Ay, arriba, ay, arriba, ay, arriba. Ay, arriba. Yo no soy marinero. 
You know what that means? That means I'm not a fucking sailor. I'm your goddamn captain. That's what that means. It's, it's basically like a dominance. Like, you submit to me. I'm the captain. Yo, soy capitan. Soy capitan. It's like you're looking at some guy with a bulging out eyeball and he's got a captain's hat on. He's got his, like, thumb out. But it's got a white glove on it. Where have I seen that before? <laughs> you know what the worst part about being a captain is? You're the ultimate accountable mofo. If, if shit fucks up, you're totally responsible. On top of that, you get to go down with the ship. Ain't that great? Way to go, Captain. I guess you better not let that happen, huh? How do you let the stress, how do you relieve your stress? Probably by fucking the cabin boy, if you know what I'm saying. You ever see that movie with Chris Elliott? It's a classic. It's so funny. And it's got good special effects in, the, in a corny kind of like, not like a Monty Python way, but more like a, I don't know. Like what, a, like a Mr. Rogers Neighborhood PBS morning program? It's like the special effects ain't that great, but they're they're convincing enough, especially with that storyline. Stand in the place where you are. Think about direction and wonder why you haven't before. Stand in the place where you blah 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 blah. On that show, he plays a paper boy. Why is Chris Elliott always playing a boy? Like he's bald headed. He has a beard. At least Pee Wee Herman managed to have a clean face and like a not bald head, right? What's that all about, huh? Why are these grown ass men trying to be children? There's something wrong there. If a grown ass man tries to be something that he's not, that's pretty fucked up, man. If you're D. Snyder and trying to look like some sort of angry woman on the rag, or if you're Pee Wee Herman trying to look like a little boy. Or Chris Elliott not even trying to look like a little boy, just acting like one. And a stupid little boy at that, right? Or what about like, uh, gee, I don't know. How about Mrs. Doubtfire? You ever, you ever... <laughs> Gotta rest your soul, dude. Actually, Mork and Mindy was probably his best work. If you know what I mean. Fuck, man. There's a lot of bullshit, ain't there? Uh, oh, my leg, my good leg, my bad leg, my third leg. <laughs> Whoa, what I knock over this time? Jesus Christ. On a, on a skewer. Jesus Christ on a wooden shish kebab. Listen to disco music. Here, here's some disco music. Doesn't sound good though, because I'm playing it like a robot. You gotta be like, uh, do chat, do do chat, do chat, do do chat. throw in something like that. Roller coaster. It's a pretty good amp, huh? That song's pretty tricky, dude. Jerry was a race car driver, let's see you play it. Oh, 
Jam was a race car driver. He drives so goddamn fast. He never did win no checkered flag. But then again, he never came in last. What does that matter? Hey man, at least you got your dignity at the end of the day. Never came in last. Whatever, man. I got dignity for days. And I always come in last. Because the whole thing's rigged, basically. It's totally rigged. And if you don't believe me, you think I'm a sore loser? That's not really true. I was just congratulating all the people that went to a con that I totally wanted to go to. Like, it's hard to be jealous, like, of that kind of a thing, because everybody is involved. You know, it's my own fault that I wasn't there. You know, it's more, you're more likely to be jealous of, like, a singular entity that's got it all, right? Like, give me a break. Who went to TwitchCon and had it all, huh? You tell me. If the, yeah, okay, check it out. You know, yeah, let's say you want to be, like, jealous of Dark Tangent, the organizer of DEF CON. That son of a bitch was always so, Jeff Moss was always so overworked. He, I'd be, I'd bet money that he's never fully enjoyed a singular DEF CON in his life. Because he's so overworked and busy trying to keep it all from falling apart. So if you want to be jealous of that guy, you're ignorant. That's how that works. You, you think that guy must be, like, at the center of it all. And it's like, motherfucker, he's at the center for, like, one second. Because there's only about, like, like at least 50 different centers to be in. you got, like, your conference rooms... And there's several of them. Then you got, like, what? Your your vendor area. And then you got, like, what? Your, you got a bunch of areas that you got to keep from falling apart, man. It says the guy that used to be a master of ceremonies. I don't really know what that means. Like, I, I know that a master of ceremonies... I use the term, like, I'm hosting the fucking party, right? But like when when a, when a hip hop person says I'm MC such and such, it's like, so let me get this straight. You're hosting the party, and you're the life of the party. What the fuck am I doing wrong? <laughs> I feel like an overworked mule. Meanwhile, you're just coasting through it. Is that what I'm supposed to do? I'm just supposed to get up, grab the mic, and wrap my way through it. Fuck, man. I should have read the manual. <laughs> right? Come on, man. That's a good way to host a party. Son of a bitch. That's ideal. That's the ideal scenario. If you're gonna be the master of ceremonies and like, you know, present the bands or the, the, the talent, you know, whatever gets up on the stage, that's what you call the talent, right? If you're presenting the talent, announcing them, giving them uh, um, an introduction, you know, and meanwhile you're keeping, you know, all the other areas of the party under control, why don't you rap while you do it? If it's like <laughs> that probably that probably works. Keep everybody like it's like you got a fight that's ready to break out. Hey, what are you doing? You looking at my girl? I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you. Hey, dweeb, I wasn't looking at your girl. I was looking at your ass. I'm a queer. What? You're looking at my ass now? I'm really gonna be... Hey, guys. What's up? Check it out. Welcome to the party. Let's get naughty. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> chicka, chicka, chicka. Bomb, ticka, bomb to upchuck the boogie. Something, something. Wow, man. I'm... I'm no longer homophobic or jealous and insecure because of my tiny little penis. Thanks, Master of Ceremonies. Yo, man, there's no reason to be insecure because I already robbed you. It's already been done. You can only be insecure when you got something to lose, right? That's, that's true. <laughs>
gonna sing about how I hate everything about you. <sighs> you know, that's, that's the key. Could you imagine, if you will, let's just say your goal is to be a rock star, right? And you've been trying and trying. I'm just trying. And, you, and, you, and it's just not working out, right? Until one day you start playing this one particular genre of music, right? And, and you got lots of people showing up. They're even paying money to get in. You know, you've got out-of-town bands showing up wanting to be on the bill. Right? What's the problem? And the problem is the music is a total downer. And, and, and you just can't, like... You just you're just too into the music to not follow it straight down. It's like trying to be a blues musician and not get the blues. It's like trying to be an emo kid and not get emo. It's like trying to be a death metal guy and not be all. What do you do? I guess you can wallow in the gutter and just stay true, right? Trying to be like a, a good time dude, a good time gal. JJ, the Ramones are always singing about really fucked up shit. Like what? have seen that video, haven't you? I played it on the Underground Music Video Show a long time ago. It is pretty fucking twisted. It's almost Halloween, right? I don't have to play the music. Granted, I can probably get away with it because I doubt if it's going to give me a copyright strike or a mute. Because the room Mmm. Semolina and eggs. Hey, I'll bet if you buy that one, you can get lots of preservatives you don't want. That sounds good. Mm-mm, preservatives. You know, I don't hate preservatives. In fact, someday, when the world ends, when the apocalypse comes, I will probably rely on them for nutrition. 
Because, like, when the cockroaches grow to be rad roach size, like Fallout, I, I won't be able to deal with that. Ew. I'll, I'd rather go raid the vending machines. And the food will still be good thanks to preservatives. That's when I'll turn to preservatives. Yeah. And my elbows will be having such a major allergic reaction. You kids in your video games. You think you, you ever played a video game? Maybe there's one. This video is so nasty. I saw it when I was a kid. You should see it too. I want the uncensored version. The original. Come on. Don't fuck around. Give me the real shit. None of this is the real shit. Uh, getting closer. These, this is all just a bunch of bullshit jerk around. Ooh. Getting closer, but no. No. I want the brains. You guys have got to taste the brains, man. Maybe if I type in official. Maybe. No. It's all cute. It's real cute and fun. It's all cute. Oh, was that Lemmy? Rest in peace, dude. Morrissey? Oh, dude, they were making fun of Morrissey. They were kind of being dicks. Morrissey's really good. Like, he's, like, got this weird style where he, I think that guy might be even more bitter than me. Like, like I, I usually want to be party guy, but when I can't be party guy, I'm either depressed guy or bitter guy, like, kind of sour, like, like, this fuck the world guy. And Morrissey's really the best at that. Here, what's that one song? Ah, probably get a copyright strike. I gotta show you the brains. You gotta see the brains. My job won't be done until you, until you taste the brains. Dude. Fuck it. This is ridiculous. Why am I always relying on myself? Seems like every good thing gets erased from the internet or replaced from the internet. It's either erased or replaced. It's never kept true. Never. At least when it comes to the underground. The underground. The underground. The underground. The underground. DDT did a job on me. Now I am a real sicky. Guess I'm gonna have to break the news that I got no mind to lose. All the girls are in love with me. I'm a teenage lobotomy. Bum 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 bum. Dun dig dig dun dig dig bum bum bum. Should be on here. Give me a second. I'll turn down the volume. We don't want to blow you away now. I got a pretty powerful sound system. You know I'm always. Oh, it's Cottonmouth Kings. There's some Ramones on here. Oh, it's uh, some Christian rock. Kind of reminds me of that movie, uh, The Crow. Or maybe I'm thinking of Dark City. But also, maybe I'm just thinking of, like, Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, this some skinny puppy. Yeah, I guess it's not this video. We got it. We got it. You're gonna see the brains. I feel like it might be this one. Is it? Which is, which is this one, JJ? What does it say? 
I'm so terrible at doing the metadata on my own videos. I guess I'm too retro, old school, hardcore for that. I need the goddamn brains. You gotta see the brains, guys. If you're ever feeling down in the dumps, if you're ever feeling sorry for yourself, watch the fucking teenage lobotomy video. And you'll get a grip real fucking quick. And you'll think, what can I do to help that poor person? Black, we here on top 40, radio stations, things like that. The funk movement represents a kind of violent redressing of the energy balance in a pop music scene that has blended out a little too far. Um, I think people were forgetting about what it was all about. And um, people were, um, and musicians, composers, groups, whatever, they, they were taking it into like a different direction. They weren't, they weren't understanding the meaning of rock and roll. Danny Fields, the Ramones manager, describes hearing their music for the first time. It was so ferocious and it was so hard and it was so solid and powerful and constructed. It was, you know, you could see it was like architectural music. It was like some Egyptian something or other monolith. It was just no loose edges anywhere, no slipperiness, no wandering off. It was just like a great machine that would, went on time. And um, that's what I like. I mean, I like that. I like something so powerful that you can't imagine it unless you're hearing it. In other words, you try to remember what they sound like when they're not there. And every time you hear them, it sounds all over again like a revelation to me. There's no stopping the Cretans from hopping. The Ramones, Cretan Hop. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded god awful. Sorry, my 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 computer wasn't agreeing with me. The mute button, it was, you know, it's like bright red, and I'm trying to click it, but it's at the very bottom of the scroll menu, and it's like won't register. <sighs> I could make it sound better. Would that be the nice thing to do? I mean, for fuck's sake, it sounds like it's coming out of an AM radio. That is really just atrocious. Here, how's this sound? I'm gonna try to adjust it. I really hope this improves it. I can't hear it because I'm hearing what's coming out of the web browser. Um, you know? If I were to, like, turn down what's coming out, it, it won't work. Even if, yeah, it's a, hope this is better. Or wait, what did I just adjust? Was that my microphone? No, that was, okay, good. I hope this is better.
originally from Cleveland and Youngstown, Ohio, the Dead Boys played their first gig at CBGB's in New York in 1976. Their violent theatrics helped to develop a rapid following for them. Those kids are pretty good, but you're not ready for them yet. The Dead Boys? Oh, dear God. You might just get to be too snotty for even me to handle. Heaven forbid. You might be all like, fucking... Oh, yeah, you know, but... That's uh, once you start listening to that, yeah, I'd, I'd suggest you listen to Iggy, the the Iggy and the Stooges uh, uh, search and destroy before you try to tackle Sonic Reducer. It's really just like it's the proper progression. It happened chronologically that way, and it'll probably affect you better because if you jump from one to the next backwards, it's gonna it's gonna twist you up, man. And then you're probably gonna be like. In the mosh pit, like <laughs> you go uh, clockwise instead of counterclockwise or whatever. <laughs> it's good advice. You, <laughs> all right. It's it's okay. We're on the right path. <sighs> this will prepare you for anything. It's probably about an hour into the program. If, if we're doing the live shows right now, then the music videos probably are the second half, right? Come on, slow internet. You can do it. You know, there were two catchphrases back in the 90s. There was a stop the insanity and you can do it. And they were both provided by the infomercial fitness trainers of the time era. Susan Powder and Tony Little. And if you want to look that up and thank me later. You know, you probably watched what? What's it called? That one Adam Sandler movie? You know, and you're like, oh, we can credit Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider was just making fun of Tony Little. He's probably up at like midnight probably stoned and uh, eating munchies out of the whatever the cupboard the fridge and he's like eh, let's turn on the TV and you see fucking Tony Little all like you can do it it's ridiculous and then and then after that you see Susan Powder with her bald head going stop the insanity and then if you were unfortunate, you turned on the TV too early, and you got to watch Rush Limbaugh before all that. Talking about the what? The feminazis? I think that was what he called them. The, the, like, the women's liberational kind of like, uh... The women's, like, basically the women that didn't want to be treated like shit by chauvinist pigs. He's called them feminazis. Stop the insanity! You can do it! You feminazis! <laughs> it's all just a, a whirlpool of garbage in my head. It's no wonder I, I try to seek good music that happened before the garbage, right? Of course, you kids are trying to make a nice future. A nice dystopian future, right? Let's see, which is better? A future where we're all holding... What sounds better? Let's hold hands across the world, sing Kumbaya, and then at the very end of the song, we can all cross hands and give each other hand jobs. Oh, that sounds great? Okay. But what if the person next to you's got, like, Cheeto fingers? Hey, man, you take what you can get? Or, or, instead of that... Stop the insanity? 
uh, just a bunch of like death metal, gangster rap, all, all a bunch of like snotty punk rock. How's about like American woman get away from me? That doesn't sound like a good way to get laid. Funny thing is, I think that actually got the guess who laid. And Lenny Kravitz, you know it got him laid, dude. He was getting laid all the fucking time. He's Lenny fucking Kravitz, man. Give me a break. Mega woman, get away from me. I'm mega woman. Just let me be. You know, like, it's almost like reverse psychology at that point. It's like, no, Lenny, I'm not going to let you be. Whip it out! I want to suck your dick on stage! Alright, I guess you're ready for the dead boys. That's what happened to Stiv Baders. I think that guy's dead. This little weaselly faced kid, he got like a, um, a whipped cream blowjob on stage at CBGB's, if you can believe that. It kind of made the dead boys legendary. Uh, personally, I think the music is more legendary, but hey, man, you know, that story is pretty legendary. I think I read about that in Please Kill Me by Legs McNeil, I think. It raises the question of exactly how big these groups you are looking at will become. Their success to this point has been rapid, and there are many groups waiting in the wings. So right now in New York, there are 50 or 60 great young rock and roll bands. They are hoping to fill a void that exists in the rock and roll industry today and satisfy a rapidly growing audience that groups like the Ramones, Blondie, and the Dead Boys have helped the to launch. The first time I saw the Ramones perform was in the spring of 1975 at CBGB's. It was a weekday night. I had gone because, well, they had asked me to come down. I was writing a column that they asked me to come down and see them. I'd sort of put it off because I had no idea what they were. A friend of mine, Lisa Robinson, went to see them. She called me the next morning. She was very excited. She said, you'll love this band. So it was, you know, I know she knows what I like. So I went down the next night that they were playing, and I just flipped me out in five seconds. I mean, five seconds into the first song they played, I just went, ah. Hey, kids. I might be wrong, but this is honest, all right? I'm going to tell you, if you ever meet a guy like that, that's enthusiastic about your music, seems to have his shit together, and like, wants to be your manager. I know the natural inclination is to be suspicious, right? Like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, why do you like us? Because you sound good. No, no, don't lie. Why do you like us? Like, like, this guy, he strikes me as a, as a godsend. You know what I mean? My honest opinion. And I, and I did read that book, by the way. And I know what he did, so. And there's that one guy, what's his name? Art, Art, Arturo? The guy that owned the loft where the Ramones used to jam? Like, seriously, man. Pay attention. If you're in a band, if you're not, well then just enjoy it and try to ignore me. Okay. You know, so what I've been waiting to hear, and it's true, I've been waiting to hear it for, you know, I don't know, seven or eight years, something that powerful and strong and right on, you know, real rock and roll. No blues, no jazz, just rock and roll, real solid. I was knocked out. I was, you know, there must have been seven people in the audience. You know. There wasn't very many people in the audience at all. And after we were through, someone came over to us and said, "Are you guys a joke? Are you a parody of a, of a rock group or something like that?" And we said, "No." Uh, we said, "You know, we're dead serious." And then our audiences just slowly started growing, and you know, and they started getting us off more, and we were. I read his book too, it's called Lobotomy. It was a good read and lightning. Getting them off more and it just developed that way.
today with the impact they've already made on the rock and roll industry and the thousands of people who come to see them play live it's hard to take the Ramones any other way than seriously success, the Blondie story, which has really just begun, is also one of an extraordinary appeal which cannot be ignored. The Blondies, for the most part, live in New York. Well, when you don't have any money and you live in New York, you don't go to Los Angeles to play music. You play music where you live. And um, they put a band together. They had a lot that they lived in that they used for rehearsal put a band together and they got Hilly Crystal, who owns CBGB's, to let them play there. And they played there, I think, for um, three months, better than three months, every week. And Debbie told them that there were times when they'd walk out of there and their split would be $5 a piece. What? In um, September, we, we played there. Um, uh, September 9th, 10th, and 11th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. As a matter of fact, the time that you did the, the Blondie tape for the show, and um, Blondie was the headline, and we used a bunch of local opening acts, and Blondie's share of those four nights were over, was over $8,000. Yeah, that's Shakespeare kind of money, man. Nice. It's a, and our a band is really good, runner. too. And one of those kind of things. I have, right. you know, rags to riches, $5 for 8000 <laughs> I'm 
Stiv Baders is dead, but Cheetah Chrome is still alive. I was surfing YouTube a while back. He's still he's got a bald like a like a Uncle Fester haircut. Which is strange because when he's playing here he's like a red headed, like curly haired guitar maniac and like uh but Stiv this got the guy that says, I don't need anyone, don't need no mom and dad, no good advice, no human rights, news for you, don't need you to uh, he's the one that got the blowjob on stage with the... <laughs> That's what I read anyways. I wasn't there, but all right. Enjoy, you crazy kid. I played this on public access like 20 years ago. Or was it more like... Yeah, like 20 years ago. Oh, and they did it like 40 years ago in real life, but, you know, I was doing good for the time, considering, you know, it's like listening to Chuck Berry when everybody else is listening to, like, what, the Bee Gees? I don't know, the Bee Gees are okay, I'm staying alive, aren't I? Boys are simply not a laid-back rock and roll group. All your life you're brought up not to really, um... Say what you feel because it's not nice or it's not good. These guys respect their parents, I mean, you know, if that makes anybody feel better. You know, they're worried about our country and everything else. They're worried. That's why they're doing it. You know what I would have? Because there ain't nothing to do.
towns, the small cities are picking up on this. I think the real That's a pretty powerful theme. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. You know, even if you've like uh, if even if you look around and everybody's got something to do, there's a disaffected element. Of, of people that are just so confused and they don't know what to do because everybody around you is having a good time except you what are you doing wrong I wonder I ain't got nothing to do sometimes it's a matter of boredom and lack of stimulation other times it's over overstimulation it's like it's like you're not left out of the party it's more like the party is like stomping like a parade all over you. It's more what it's like now. The real value of this new wave, whatever it may be, is that it encourages new bands to do their own thing. And when it's talking about the punk movement, one is talking about a lot of different kinds of music. Obviously, if you compare the music of Blondie, the Dead Boys and the Ramones, they're very different, you know? And uh, I guess that's one of the things that's really great about it, because uh, there's all that variety. Sheena is a punk rocker. production quality, right? The nice thing about staying true to yourself is uh, when everybody else lets you down, at least you haven't let yourself down. You, even years down the line, you know, I can't blame people for being sellouts, posers, and phonies, you know? But, <laughs> that's not me. I'm authentic. Always have been. And it feels good, not in the I'm better than you way, 
it feels good in the at least something in this god that forsaken world is true at least i'm true to myself because once you you once you compromise yourself you can't go back baby it's like if you're a straight edge guy and and you decide to do whatever and now you're no longer straight edge well guess what you can't go back you can try but you're just gonna look stupid why don't you just go with the decision you made and hey man you know doesn't mean you gotta be mister fucked up guy all the fucking time but it sure as hell means that you're not afraid of the abyss cause you did it you lived through it and there's nothing that's gonna stop you right and you're still on your course that you, you it's like if you start out with minor threat and you end up at poison idea 20 years down the road who cares you guys know the story with that right probably get me a copyright strike dude this is a really good video that's Robert Smith the guy his hair's usually really frizzed out right you guys have heard my cover of uh, boys don't cry right you've seen the video too right isn't it cute come on where's the boys don't cry video it's pretty clever. I don't know where they found those kids, but they look like they can play. This must have been a really interesting era. Because there was so much music. Like, you were free to basically do whatever. And you're going to find a place to play. It really was like... I can't even imagine. I wasn't even alive yet. you're not going to feel the music not properly until you've like what given your trust to somebody like a partner in a relationship and then allowed them to stomp on your heart so you'll appreciate the music that that's the, the kind of band that is it's like if you ever feel like a weepy whiny little crybaby after being dumped why don't you just listen to, why don't you watch this video on repeat until you feel better, you wimpy, whiny little crybaby. Hey, here's your consolation prize that you got laid. There you go. At least you're not an asexual 40-year-old virgin like that one movie. You've seen it, where he's all playing the rock band drums, like... You know he's good enough, he could probably be the drummer in a real band and be getting laid. But he's like, what's getting laid? I don't know what you're talking about. And you know, it's not all about getting laid. It's more like being a part of the world. And and getting laid is kind of a fringe benefit. At least if you look at it that way, then you're not like giggity, giggity, giggity. All disgusting and shit. All toxically, whatever, you know? But if you ever accidentally fall in love, this is a good consolation prize. You can like sit there and touch yourself and like think about your lost love and listen to this and until you feel better and go looking for the next one, right? Something like that. I don't know. 
It's at least you'll you'll uh, be able to go, boys. Don't cry. I would say I'm sorry. You know all that. But I know now it's too late. But this isn't what I'm trying to. Why is it so hard to find brains? I just want to show you guys some brains. It's Halloween time. You think I'd have better metadata? I couldn't find it on fucking YouTube, right? Is there somewhere else I should look? I don't know. It's all good. I'm not thinking about my problems. I'm thinking about brains. It's a horrible video, you guys. It's really bad. It'll probably fuck you up for the rest of your life. Once you see Teenage Lobotomy, if that doesn't fuck you up for the rest of your life, in the good way, I don't know. Is there a good way? Is there a bad way? I, I don't believe in, like, evil and, like, righteous. You know what? I give up. Except one last try. So you guys like that? You see how Les Claypool ended up the way he ended up, right? Because really, once you get good at that shit, you can play anything, and, it, and it's pretty fun. And, and, and once you figure out how to make... It took him about 4,000 cover songs. And once he did that, he's like, I can make anything sound good. Like, literally the opening theme song to South Park, like that one song, not the first one that's all like, it's all like, I'm going down to South Park, I'm gonna have myself time. I'm going, going down to South Park, I'm gonna meet some friends of mine. Like, not that one. No, I'm talking about the one that's all like, You see, the thing about that one is he's got a handlebar at the top of the fucking bass and he's bending it to adjust the string tension and so he's not really sliding like I'm doing. He's literally just going like, he's, he's tweaking a handle going, and, and he's like going down here going like, but by bending the handle up at the top, it's all like. It's like, the guy just does whatever the fuck he wants. And he's like Ren and Stimpy guy, like, you know, you know what Ren and Stimpy gave us, right? Ren and Stimpy gave us the uh, the humor, the humorous viewpoint of being totally disgusting. Like, if you've got earwax buildup, if you have a white tongue that's covered with that mucusy kind of thick, like yellowy white shit, if you've got bloodshot eyeballs. If you've got like that green grit under your fingernails, you should probably take care of all of those things with some visine and some Q-tips and some fingernail clippers. Cause Red and Stimpy managed to show us what that's like. Yeah, that was really popular. God only knows why. Sometimes I wonder why SpongeBob is popular until I see like, uh, you know, the good shit. You know, you know. The good Ren and Stimpy and the good Spongebob. If you see that stuff, you'd be, just be a fan forever, won't you? Yeah. If only it was all that good, right? <laughs> Sometimes you'll watch The Simpsons and you'll be like, this is all good. This is all fantastic. They're so funny and original, right? Simpsons did it! Right? I remember when they did that episode with Elon Musk, and I'm like, Elon who? <laughs> How many years ago was that, right? Yeah. It's almost like they developed a Cassandra complex or something. Um, images, there we go. Okay, let's try this one. Let's try this trick and spin it.
this will help me find it. As soon as I see it, I'll know it. No, no, no. 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 We played it on random access. It's just so wrong. It's about the worst thing you'll ever see. It's, it's just about nightmare really. But, and still, I don't want to shelter you from it. Because, yeah, I mean, it really gives you some perspective. It's like if you think about, like, shock treatment therapy, and how fucked up that is. Once you see this, you'll be like, give me shock treatment. Yeah, I'll take that over the lobotomy. I need a little week. How's about this regular lobotomy? Let's go to the medical fucking dictionary or whatever. Let's go to Gray's Anatomy. I'm serious, you gotta see this. If I can't find their version of this, let's just look at the real thing out of a fucking medical textbook, why don't we? Yeah. Yeah. That gives you some fucking perspective, don't it? Jesus Christ almighty. How did, how did they get away with this? It's supposedly that there's, there's two hemispheres of the human brain, the left and the right. Supposedly you can live a completely normal life without one or the other. And if you're constantly having temporal epileptiform discharges, like, uh, like, like epileptic seizures, like if you constantly have them, like, you know, video games and flashing lights are known to cause epileptic seizures in a certain select group of people you know they are susceptible they are vulnerable to these flashing lights and such yeah what if you were like what if that was going on constantly and it didn't even require flashing lights video what if it was gonna happen regardless of anything because you got like cross wires that's when they take out half your brain and you get to live with the left or the right one they say one is very logical, the other is very artistic, your two hemispheres. Yeah. I guess your brain is so awesome, it learns how to compensate. Like if you, if you lose your artistic side, well guess what, your logical side will start to develop artistic ability on its own. And if your artistic side gets cut out, or... Whatever I just said, vice versa, right? That's what they say, man. And I believe it. You know, because we only use 5% of it as it is from what I hear. And I believe that, too. Because, like, uh... But there's some, like... You ever seen that Scarlet jo Scar Joe Lucy? You know what I'm talking about, man? Yeah, I wish I could. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's just really creepy. It's about the creepiest Halloween theme I can think of. You know, like you get, you boil up some spaghetti, you take your semolina flour, your eggs, your olive oil, <laughs> and you make some spaghetti and then you clump it all together with some gelatin or something. And then you, you got your brains and you dye it pink or something. Ooh, I like it. That's a good, that's a good uh, look. I might have to make that my like profile avatar thing or Bob. What do you think? Attractive? Is that attractive? It reminds me of Metroid. This is a pretty pointless stream, but I feel better. All right. And at least my upload finally got uploaded. I don't know. You don't need to know about the error messages. I'll talk to you later.